Now let's start in detail about SAML. Okay, so so until this that we have seen, right? Like that day we have seen uh, what is uh, SAML mm -hmm. and uh, what the well, like how, how the SAML will be transferring the data between uh, both the applications, uh, which mm -hmm. means identity and service provider. So identity provider is nothing but a uh, tool that is taking care of uh, performing the authentication and authorization. So here in this scenario, Okta will be the identity provider and uh, the service provider will be the application where the end users are getting some service. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for, uh, that application has been integrated with Okta for SSO. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that we will call it a service provider. So whenever a user tries to log into the service provider, uh, for example, whenever they are hitting the URL, okay, uh, maybe HTTPS colon uh, double slash uh, salesforce dot cognizant.com okay this is the url that they will be hitting once they hit this url okay they are accessing the service provider basically okay mm -hmm. that that url will be routed to the okta url because okta is an identity provider uh, uh, system so in service provider we have a configuration that whenever the request comes into uh, the organization's uh, salesforce application that request should automatically route to the uh, idp okay identity provider set which is okta here okay you mm -hmm. will be prompted for user id and password in the okta console and if you enter your user id and password authentication authorization will take place in okta once that is done okta will again send a note or send a, a response back to the application salesforce application saying that the user have a proper access and the user is an authenticated user likewise it will send a response from identity provider to service provider okay hmm. uh, that is what the flow will work basically uh, there will be an another flow okay uh, the first flow that i said right if you are hitting https colon salesforce.cognizant.com it's an esp initiated flow okay service provider initiated flow because you are entering the service provider's url okay but now let's say let's take an example you are logging into okta okay and in okta you can see the uh, tiles list of tiles available in the okta console okay uh, from uh, in the tile you can see a salesforce application tile also of okay if you click that or if you copy that uh, uh, what to say if you copy that uh, url right for that application tile you can see the url starts with https colon double slash uh, your organizations dot okta dot com let's say if it is a cognizant cognizant dot okta dot com okay from that uh, user access the salesforce application automatically he will be routed to the https colon double slash salesforce dot cognizant dot com url okay this is an idp based url idp initiated url you are trying to access an application access from okta url Okay, but if you access it from the Salesforce URL, that we will call it a service provider initiated SSO. Okay, flow. Okay. Is it clear? Any questions yeah. on that IDP and SP? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see how that SAML works. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here you can see uh, the step by step one, two, three, four, five. Okay. First, user logs into SSO, which means user logs into Okta. Mm -hmm. Okay. From Okta, he is trying to access an application. In this scenario, you can take Salesforce application. Okay, he is trying to access the application. So that is the second step. Okay, what application will do is service provider check the user credential with the identity provider, which means um, if you access that URL, uh, if you access that uh, uh, Okta URL, what it happens is Okta will send a note to the uh, service provider salesforce application here okay uh, we, we we said about response right so okta will send a response to the salesforce application okay that's what here it says service providers check the user credentials with the identity provider okay identity provider is sending a response to that application and application will validate it and it will you know uh, ask the i mean allow the user to access that application that is the uh, that is step three okay now step four identity provider send an authorization authentication process back to service provider okay i think this is something different okay let me come from the beginning okay uh user logs into s so here it is not sso actually it is application okay user logs into application i think i have to edit it i'll do it user logs into application which means https colon salesforce.com okay he is logging into the application okay and he is trying to access that uh, salesforce web page that's what he is doing so that is the second step 
third step, what it will do is service provider, which is a sales force. Uh, it Salesforce will say like, okay, ha, ha, there is a request came from this user. He wants to access this page, our Salesforce page, Salesforce application, okay? It will uh, uh, knows that, okay? What service provider will do is service provider will send a note to identity provider and identity provider will validate that information, okay? Whoever is logging in and uh, whether uh, the person who is logging in, he have access to that application or not, okay? That's what here it is mentioned. Service providers check these user credentials and the, in the identity provider so service provider will send a note to the identity provider for checking their user credentials and the authorization information okay and mm -hmm. once once the identity provider validates that information okay i'm saying I, I said right service provider will will request the identity provider to perform these actions like validate credentials validate the credit uh, authorizations mechanisms okay once it is valid uh, once it is came to identity provider identity provider will validate that and identity provider have to send that validation uh, detail back to the application that validation message will have that yes this is an authenticated user this user have access to this application okay that message or it will send a message like no no this is not an appropriate user it's not a proper user so you should not grant access to that uh, uh, user and access application access so likewise it will send a message that word that is mentioned as step four okay identity provider sends an authorization and authentication messages back to the service provider okay Okay, the flow is very simple. Like if you start from a uh, service provider, service provider will send a note to identity provider. Identity provider will validate that information and it will send back the message back to the application, okay, to the service provider. And once that is done, user can able to log into the applications, okay, whatever the application that he uh, tries to access. Okay. Any questions on, it is just a, a over high view uh, flow okay it's it's not like a detailed one let's ne next slide we will see in detail about that okay. okay so this is in detail flow how saml works okay mm -hmm. yeah so here you can see three components first one is identity provider okay which is octa in this scenario this is service provider which is salesforce in this scenario and this is a browser so this browser can be anything uh, it can be Google Chrome or it can be Mozilla or it can be Edge, whatever the browser it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, user is going to access any of the uh, user is going to access the Salesforce application uh, from browser only. Okay. That's the first step. The end user access service provider from browser. Okay. Once he start, he enter the URL, the URL will take you to the service provider. Okay. Service provider uh, uh, configuration in the back end. What it happens is service provider will validate that. Okay. And it will say like, okay, we need to uh, get this user authentication and authorization information. So what, uh, what service provider will do? Service provider will redirect that request to the browser again. Okay. That's mm -hmm. what here it is mentioned. The second step service provider redirects the SAML request back to the browser. Mm -hmm. Okay. And browser will redirect the same to same SAML request to identity provider. Okay. Identity provider will receive that. Okay. And it will check for the user account password. Okay. Uh, it will ask for you to enter the user ID and password. Okay. That's what this middle step identify and authenticate the user. Okay. So once that happens, once the user account have entered their user ID and password from the browser, mm -hmm. okay, uh, in the Okta console, what Okta will do is Okta will validate that in the back end. Okay. In the back end, it will validate the user account and password and the authorization information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once it is validated and it will generate a message. Okay, how that message looks like is it's a SAML assertion. Okay, it's it's like an assertion. I think that we that day we have asked uh, that we have talked about how the assertion will looks like. Okay, it start from the uh, open uh, greater than symbol and uh, close like greater than symbol. Sorry, less than okay, less than and greater than symbol. And in the middle there will be an uh, uh, attribute name. And if you pass any information between that attribute name, that will be transferred between applications. Okay, likewise it will generate an assertion message. Okay, that message will be posted back to the browser. Mm 
Okay. Here you can see that's the uh, fifth step that has been completed on the on this browser. Okay. Now browser will send that SAML assertion back to the service provider because service provider need that message. Okay. That message contains whether that user have access to that application or not, or what level of access that a user have access to it. So those details, right? Service provider needs that. Then only service provider can able to uh, uh, what to say uh, initiate the or grant a session. Okay, to the applicant to the user, grant an application session to the users. So that's what it says. So the browser uh, relay SAML assertion back to service provider. Okay, browser will send a SAML assertion message back to the service provider. And here in this step, if the user is authenticated, SP sends the security contest to the browser. Okay, okay. So what does what this step says is if the the service provider receive that information receive that message okay that message will again be validated in the service provider and it will send a note to the browser saying that uh, right now user can able to access the application okay now again browser will will initiate a resource request what is resource request it it is requesting for the console access okay uh, browser is requesting for the console access because right now we are trying to access that console only so that needs to be requested by the browser that's what this eighth step mentioned request resource from service provider from browser okay browser will initiate that okay if uh, the saml assertion has been validated already and the user information has been validated already with the help of identity provider now service provider knows that okay this browser is being uh, you know this uh, this browser is requesting this resource. So now I have validated the uh, message that has been sent from identity provider. Everything looks fine. Now the service provider will send a, a resource back to the browser. So once it is sent, I can able to see that, uh, 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 you know, the application screen, application uh, console, I can say. So this is the flow, entire flow that starts from uh, end, end user whenever he tries to log into uh, any application and it ends how the resources are being allocated to that users. Okay. Any questions on this flow? Yeah, it's clear. Okay, fine. So now we have talked about how the flow oh, is well, happening. This seventh one, right? So after browsers, uh, uh, this assertion back to the service provider, uh -huh. Again, the service provider uh, sent back to that browser. Uh, this authentication is already validated, right? Yes, so authentication is already done, but service provider got that uh, uh, information, got that message, okay? And it will validate in the service provider end also, first time, okay? Once mm -hmm. it is validated, service provider will send a notification to the browser saying that, mm -hmm. hey, whatever the information that we got from this uh, identity provider is a valid one. Okay, now okay. the you know, now you, the browser. Okay, you can able to request for the resource. The resource can be anything. Like it can be the admin console, or it can be the end user dashboard. Uh, I mean, the Salesforce end user dashboard. I'm saying, or the reporting dashboard, whatever it is. Okay, so the security context has been already. The message has been already validated, and that message will be stored in the service provider. That we will call it as session session cookies. Okay, in the service provider, session cookies will be stored. So whenever you want to access any of the different different component inside the Salesforce, automatically the browser will send a note to the service provider. Okay, requesting for that resource. That resource is like an uh, as I said, uh, uh, admin dashboard, reporting dashboard, end user dashboard, whatever the dashboard is. So those are the resource. Okay, only with the help of single user ID and credentials, you are granting access to. Uh, uh, admin console, you are granting access to uh, report admin access, end user dashboard access, so everything. So how it came is with the help of that session cookies that is being stored here. Okay. Uh, in the seventh step, uh, the service provider is saying that, hey, I, I got that cookies. So now you can request for whatever the resource that you want. Okay. okay, it's it's sending a notification to the browser. So browser will uh, request again, like I want to use the admin dashboard or I want to use the end user dashboard. Like this, it will send a request again, okay, for a resource and the resource will be granted to the end users or the browsers. Okay. Because there is a co cookie, session cookie already available. Okay. Okay, so now we just talked about the flow. Okay, mm -hmm. how identity provider is talking with the uh, browser, how the browser is talking with service provider, how service provider is sending uh, uh, request back again to the uh, identity provider for SAML assertion, how that is happening. Okay, that uh, we have talked about that, but 
how the entire stuffs are being configured that we are going to see now okay mm -hmm. now uh, we uh, like to initiate this entire flow right we need to configure few stuffs both in the identity provider end and the service provider end because the service provider needs to know that okay whenever someone hitting the url to which identity provider i need to route this request okay that service provider need to know that configuration should be there in the service provider also mm -hmm. service provider will send a notification to identity provider identity provider will create a saml assertion okay assertion file message identity provider need to send back that message to the service provider only okay sales for service provider only it should not send to any other service provider that we have because we will be having plenty of service providers that we will be integrating with octa right so it should send only to that particular service provider which the request has been initiated request has been came from okay so for that we need some kind of type of configuration that should happen at the identity provider end also okay we will see how we can do that and what are all the details that we need for configuring those configuration in both identity provider and service provider end okay any questions on this no okay. now let's talk about uh, all those stuffs you know whatever we have seen right in detail okay so saml request saml request is nothing but an a request has been initiated from service provider uh, to identity provider for requesting the authentication information that we will call it a saml request okay uh, this flow uh, from here to here here to this flow okay it okay. is requesting right 223 to 4 so okay. this is the saml request okay so here you can see saml request and saml request okay uh, saml request is being sent from service provider to identity provider that's what it is mentioned saml request is also known as the authentication request is generated by the service provider to request an authentication where in the identity provider mm. okay and saml response okay now uh, Octa have uh, completed that information, okay, and it have processed that uh, assertion, and it have created that message, okay. That message needs to be sent back to the uh, service provider, right? That we will call it a SAML response, okay. Uh, like we can say, like identity provider sending the SAML response back to the application, okay. Uh, SAML request is nothing but application is requesting uh, SAML request from Octa. I mean to Octa. So the request has been SAML request has been sent from the service provider to identity provider. So that's what we will call it a SAML response. Any questions on the SAML response? No. We can see the uh, content also. It is generated by the identity. Identity, identity pro okay. SAML yeah. response is given by identity provider. And what it is like, it assertion of authentication that user details. It's yeah, uh, basically it's a message. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, here we like if you are talking about a technical term, it's an authenticated user's mess uh, assertion. Okay, but we are saying in a common term, it's a message. Okay, what message? From Successful message. Provider to service provider. Yes, correct. That we will call it a SAML response. Okay, is it clear? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now uh, the 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 another one is service provider initiated flow, SP initiated flow. I think this I have covered in the first uh, thing itself today. So identity provider, if you hit URL called https colon double slash salesforce dot com, okay, the flow starts from here because you directly hit the service provider, right? So from this it goes to the service provider automatically. You are hitting that URL, okay? Service provider URL, and it will send for request. Request uh, will be processed here. Response will be sent back, okay? This flow will call it as IDP, sorry, SP flow, service provider initiated flow, mm -hmm. okay? Because you are ent entering the URL of service provider, not the ID IDP URL, okay? That we will call it as SP initiated flow. Okay. okay. Uh, this is somewhat an important question in uh, you know interview if you attend anything. So they will ask what is uh, IDP initiated flow or what is SP initiated flow. They will ask this question. Okay. So you need to be in the question to answer that. Okay. And the IDP flow, identity provider initiated flow. Okay. That is nothing but if you hit the URL or if you hit the application tile from Okta, that we will call it as identity provider. Here okay. in this scenario, right, there will be no SAML request. Okay, only service provider will send a request SAML request to uh, uh, identity provider. But here in this scenario, SAML request will not be initiated because user enter the URL of IDP itself. Okay, he is not uh, entering the URL of SP 
service provider okay mm-hmm. he is starting from the idp and idp will process that user and it will process the uh, message that will be sent as a response to the application service provider so no saml request will come into the picture if you work on identity provider initiated flow okay okay if it is an initiated uh, sp initiated flow both the message will be sent saml request message and saml response message okay mm-hmm. but if it is an identity provider flow only saml response will be sent from idp to sp okay clear right yeah yeah uh, but mostly these days uh, all the applications it's again integrated with the uh, okta that, that means we are using like uh, uh, identity provider initiators on the right so we are not no. using direct no no you can do it you can uh, you don't see two ways we can do it but uh, uh, it's easy way right so uh, yes, yes, because yes. Uh, again to need to remember up all the urls so instead of like we are integrating directly yeah. the applications into identity provider yeah. initiatives on the right we are using yes, yes. no i actually there is an another scenario okay whatever you are saying those applications can able to uh, you know uh, make your tile available in the okta console okay there are few applications which has been integrated with okta for sso those applications you cannot allocate tile in okta okay there is no option let's say for example open id connect applications okay few open id connect applications cannot int- cannot uh, uh, the tile will not be available for those applications in okta uh, dashboard so at that time obviously you need to go with the sp initiator flow Okay, and also there will be a, yeah, URL. Uh, you need to enter the service provider url and there will be some requirement also of some application they will say like no no i want uh, uh, my users to access from the sp initiated url only i don't want my users to be accessed from uh, the okta console okay okta is even i just though, want even though if you are like okta tile will be not there in a uh there some applications but their authentication should be integrating with okta correct that uh, the tile will be not there in that okta correct it will not be there in the okta you can restrict it but the authentication authorization will take place in okta only because you have integrated that application with okta for single sign on okay okay yeah uh is it clear yeah sure so the next thing uh i'll i'll come from the bottom okay what is idp sign in url so if you cite uh, if you read this this is an endpoint on the idp side where the saml requests are posted so i said right so uh, there should be a configuration should be given at the service provider end so the service provider end service provider will send a saml request to that particular place okay that we will call it as idp sign in url is it clear any confusion no, on that it's it's just a configuration okay uh, like i said configuration but how that configuration looks like the configuration looks like an url you need to enter that url in that configuration page okay uh, it will ask for idp sign in url if you integrate uh, uh, the salesforce application with okta right so whenever you are doing at the salesforce end it will ask you for the idp sign on url that means uh, the service provider side they need to enter our idp url correct okta idp url okay okta okay. idp url they need to enter on to the salesforce side correct salesforce end yeah okay and the acs endpoint is vice versa okay in okta we need to enable single sign on for the salesforce application so what we will do is we will update the acs endpoint url in okta for salesforce configuration Okay. so that the response will be posted for salesforce application in that particular url that url we will call it as acs url or acs endpoint okay acs is nothing but an assertion consumer service url okay the full form is uh, assertion consumer service so uh, so it is very very simple like what is assertion assertion is nothing but a message okay consumer which means you are sending a response the service provider needs to have that consuming opening okay or consuming position in that application end okay that url we will call it as assertion consumer service url okay okay so any other questions on this no yeah okay the certificate means uh, uh, because okay for, uh, certificate i missed okay after we integrating so we will get uh, the certification so that certificate we need to give to that uh, service providers yes 
two things two things here so uh, i i need to tell you why the certificate is needed okay so let's say for example you are sending a response from identity provider to service provider okay that response is like an assertion okay it's a message okay uh, that message is being sent from one application to another application either it can be in internet or it can be with a uh, private network right so anyone can able to uh, block that uh, response okay or block that uh, data transfer happening between service pro ID identity provider and service provider and user uh, any of the hacker can able to get that information of what is being transferred between the applications okay and they can able to modify it and they can able to hack your application your service provider also and our identity provider also it is very difficult okay it's very difficult to protect those things okay mm -hmm. for that what what they are doing is they are introduced a concept called certificate so what the certificate will do is whenever you are sending a response from identity provider to service provider it will encrypt with the help of that certificate okay the data will be encrypted with the help of that certificate okay and the certificate will be uh, uh, configured at the service provider end also now let's take a scenario okay uh, you are initiating a message or you are initiating an assertion file from uh, yes uh, identity provider to service provider okay before in, uh, before uh, transferring the data with the help of certificate that we have at idp end okay it will encrypt the data okay once it is encrypted the data will be sent from idp to sp at sp end there should be some configuration that it should decrypt that message right that's where the certificate that we have given from octa to the application will work and it will decrypt that data okay and it will decrypt the data and it will um, you know uh, send that assertion back to the application the response will be uh, being trans uh, being uh, you know uh, transferred in a secured way okay so that's what about certificate is all about it's used in that okay okay so as of now i don't want to talk about uh, okay So I think benefits of SAML that we have seen already. Uh, have we seen about this uh, Okta integration network? Let me see. No. So Okta integration network that we have seen already. Okay. So what is Okta integration network? Okta integration network is uh, nothing but an uh, a network that is available in Okta with a predefined integration configuration. Okay, I said right, right now. So if you want to integrate an app with uh, uh, Okta, you need to give some configuration at the Okta side. And also there should be a configuration should be happening at the uh, service provider and also service provider side also. Okay. If you want to do the configuration, it's like if you are doing an application as a customized application, you need to perform more action at your end okay you have to enter all the details manually you have to uh, if you want to enable provisioning you need to install a scheme connector for that so it's, it's a long process but if you have that application already available in the octa integration network it's very easy it's very simple step for you to integrate with octa okay it's very easy like uh, it's it's like a template that is already available in octa which you can make use of it and you can enable single channel for those applications but at the configuration at the service provider end we cannot do anything because it's there and uh, the application team have to do it okay this configuration they have to know it we don't have any restriction on that only we can uh, make use of the template that is available in octa for the idp configurations Okay, that we will talk like what is uh, Okta integration network, what are all the things that we can able to achieve from Okta integration network that we will see. Yeah, yeah. So before entering into Okta integration network, I'll tell you like what are all the benefits or what are all the futures available in Okta integration network. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, there are seven thousand plus pre-integrated applications, which means seven thousand plus templates are available in Okta. Let's say if you want to access, uh, if you want to enable single sign-on for Salesforce application, okay, there is a template available specific to Salesforce. Or let's say you want to integrate ServiceNow. Okay, there is a predefined template available in ServiceNow. So what you can do is you can go ahead and enter your organization ServiceNow URL and click save. That's it. You mm -hmm. don't need to give any other stuffs at all. It is very simple. Okay. So 
seven thousand plus predefined integrated uh, template is available in Okta. Okay, I think the exact count is uh, seven thousand three hundred forty-one something because last week I have taken that uh, to another uh, guy. So yeah, I just remember. Like, you know, like seven thousand three hundred and some changes there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so as I said, it is very simply. Uh, simplified steps that we need to uh, you know do for configuring single sign on from the identity provider end so it says simplifies configuration steps and faster o365 deploy deployment so if you are working on any other tool right deploying o365 is really a tough task it's very difficult for you to uh, deploy O365, okay? Because O365 will support different protocols. It doesn't support SAML. It doesn't support any other protocols. It supports only WS Federation. So uh, your SSO application may not support that. Uh, may not support that uh, uh, WS Federation protocol. So it is very difficult for you to integrate. Uh, O365 apps with any other SSO tools, but Okta it is very simple. Okay, that's why mm -hmm. they have mentioned faster, faster Office 365 deployments. Okay, and mm -hmm. also you can say the you can uh, define the uh, lifecycle management in an automated way. Okay, uh, automated way in the sense, let's say for example you want to uh, grant access to any of the users uh, that is being onboarded to Okta automatically or in a periodic manner, you can do it. There is an automation way you can go ahead and do it. Okay. That is possible and simplified sign on from Active Directory. So it is a common one for Okta. So it is not specific to Okta integration network, but is it, they are mentioning this as also as a future. So we are going to get the authentication authorization information from Active Directory with the help of AD agents. Okay. It's a simplified one for uh, doing the authentication authorization from Active Directory. Okay. And gain exposures to thousands of Okta customers. So what does thousands of Okta customers? So all the 7,000 plus applications, right? So they are Okta customers. Okay. They have their configuration pre-integrated in Okta. So in that way, you can able to access all those applications and you can define the configuration for your organization. Uh, you can make use of the template that is available. Mm -hmm. Okay and simplify knowledge base for administrators. So for each and every application integration, right? They will generate the KB article. For example, if you are integrating service now, okay? Uh, they will tell you how to integrate at, at the identity provider. At the same time, they will tell you how to integrate the same thing at the service provider end also. So what you can do is you can share this KB article to the service provider uh, team and they will ask you to, uh, and they will ask uh, uh, the team to follow the steps for configuring single sign at the service provider end okay there are many kb articles like that available so even though if they don't know how to enable sso service provider don't know how to enable sso how to configure sso with the help of the kb article that is being shared by this octa integration network right you they can able to uh, configure that from their end is it clear yeah and categories so there are categories available for example if you want to uh, perform any hr application uh, sso uh, enablement you can go ahead and do it by clicking hr applications tag and you can you know configure it like it's it's uh, it is very simple categorization you can make use of it okay